in this project we're going to work on a spelt pie dough. A couple of things you want to make sure that when you're starting to work with fresh grains, I'm using a spelt berry um, that you can buy online. You can access it through your local purveyors, obviously. I'm using this neat, nifty little contraption that I found on my recent trip to the kneading conference. It's called a mock mill. And it's a great contraption that for fairly little money, you can get yourself into home milling. And the way to operate this is, you want to turn on your kitchen aid mixer ahead of time. And then you want to add your grains to the top. And then dial down to the th how fine you want your flour to be milled. For this pie dough, I want it fairly fine. And then you just have to be a little patient. And what you get out of here is this beautifully fresh milled, very aromatic, I wish you could smell it, flour that we can turn into some beautiful pie dough. So one thing that you want to be aware of when you're milling fresh grains is that the temperature that the stones inside your housing are going to warm up and eventually warm up the flour coming out at the end. And that breaking point is you want to keep it below 120. Ideally between about 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit would be ideal. So having a little thermometer available and just testing your output. Right now at about 95 degrees, which is normal. Our ambient temperature, just so you have a point of reference, is about 82, 83 degrees. So we're in a fairly warm workshop. One thing that we did ahead of time was we chilled the grain in the fridge just to keep it a little moist. The danger though is that they can start to gum up because they're building condensation as they come back to room temperature. So once all the flour has been milled, we want to use it right away. Put it into our bowl. Then we want to take cold cubed butter. Take some salt and some sugar. And at first what we're going to do is we're just going to stir the dry greens together a little bit. And then what we want to do is, in a shearing action, we want to take our hand and basically push together and flake the butter into flakes. And you want to do that while the butter and the flour is as cool as possible. Keeping those flakes will give you some nice flaky pie dough. Once it becomes sort of like a coarse cornmeal, crumbly, bread crumby kind of a texture, we want to add our cold water. And then using a bowl scraper, we want to just quickly combine this, not over mixing it. And then once it starts to come together, you want to stop the mixing fairly quickly and place it onto a plastic film. And wrap it with the plastic. Compress it flat. And I would encourage, because it is milled and it's still a little bit warm, to really let that rest overnight in the fridge before we go and use it as a pie dough or a little tartlets that we're going to process later on. 
So for the spell pie dough, we've let the dough rest overnight. We're going to roll it out to about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And again, where it get cold, it's easier to sort of manipulate. You might have to sort of pound it a little bit just to get it pliable enough to elongate. And just make sure that when you're rolling it, that you're rolling it in both directions. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a four and a half inch size cookie cutter and we're just going to cut some discs out of here. We'll roll this just a little bit longer here. And then we're going to place these on our parchment lined sheet pan. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the center of this with a little bit of cream cheese filling. And then what's really fun is to play with different kinds of fruit. Um, for this um, sample here, we're going to use some pan roasted um, plums. I used a little brown sugar, a little butter, a little vanilla extract, and just roasted them just enough so they get a little soft. I've also done this with blueberry filling. Um, you can do strawberry rhubarb, really great taste. And I like the cream cheese underneath it because it gives it a little bit of more extra moisture. You want to make sure that they're cold when you're working with them. It's a little easier because if that dough gets too soft, it'll become hard to sort of finish it off. And then what I always like to do too is with fruit is to give it a little textural experience is to use some crumb topping. And here it can be any crumb topping. I've got some of what I call a special crumb topping. I'm put that on top. I'm going to fill all the tarts before I finish them. And to finish them off, what I do is I just bring the edge over and pinch it so it holds the filling in a little bit. Just a little scalloped edge to it. And then what I do is I brush it with a little bit of egg wash and then sprinkle a little bit of turbinado sugar over that again to give it a little bit of a crunch. The egg wash really is just there for a little shine underneath there. 
and then I bake them at 360 degrees in a convection oven till they're nice and golden brown. So to finish the spell tarts, um, one way that I like to finish them is again to sort of highlight the center little floral pattern. And I like to do that again playing with color highlights and lowlights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna powder sugar them first. cooking over here is a little bit of apricot preserves. I'm going to brush that over the top again to just clean up the center profile and leave the outer edge nice and white.